Welcome to OpenShift Virtualization Demo. The starting point is to check the installed operators. We can see that OpenShift Virtualization Operator is up and running. And also we can see that there is one instance of the uh, OpenShift Virtualization Deployment already there, which is the QVert Hyperconverged. The uh, second step is to quickly create a project. We already have project here having one virtual machine running it will create our own project for the demo so we call it dotnet virtual machines dotnet vms so the project is created then we can go to virtualization so once project is created then we can create a virtual machine so we'll create a virtual machine from an existing template OpenShift comes with built-in templates for RHEL, Windows machines, CentOS, and some of those machines already having the operating system a subscription or license, while others, they still need a boot image. So for this demo, we'll create a RHEL 8 virtual machine. Just give it a name, .NET VM, and there are different flavors of this VM. We'll use this small one, which is one vCPU and two GB, otherwise you can choose different flavors also it comes with a built-in disk 30 gb and the disk will be created using a persistent volume claim having the operating system already installed so let's create the virtual machine so virtual machine is created we can see now that it's waiting for the volume binding where the persistent volume will be created and then if we go to the uh, VVCs, we can see that there is a .NET VM VVC created with 30 GB capacity and a status is bound to this virtual machine. If you go back to the virtual machine, virtual machine is running. Still, we need to uh, wait for the guest agent to start. And if we go to the console, we can see that the uh, virtual machine is still starting. Go back to the details. Now it is running and we can see that it's created on this namespace and having one disk and this is the IP address assigned to the virtual machine. And it is running on uh, worker node one and it's running the uh, Linux operating system 8.7. Other than that, there are no services or active users uh, on the virtual machine. So, now it is ready running and the uh, guest agent is already up and running so we can go to the uh, cli and change to the dotnet vms project and then query open shift about the existing vms so we can see that yeah the .NET VM is created and it is running since 104 seconds. So we can connect to the console, log in using the username and password provided. So the next step is to register the system. So we'll use the subscription manager to register this real machine. Once registered, then we'll attach the system to be able to install all the required packages. So our system is subscribed. So let's quickly uh, install the .NET runtime. So, so the yum install .NET. So once installed, we can now check the .NET and also we can get the information about the version. 
and the runtime empire. So I think we're ready. So now let's create our first .NET application. It's a simple web application. So .NET create new web. Give it a name demo. Then the demo folder will be created with all the uh, assets. So let's change directly to demo and then run the demo app. So our application is running and it's listening uh, to local host. So if you go to the virtual machine details and get the IP address of the virtual machine, which is anyway discoverable or routable from any bot running. So we have the uh, web terminal bot here. We'll try to just curve this URL. Sorry, the IP address using this port number 5040. Ah, so failing to connect. Why? Because simply we started the application listening only to the local host. So let's accept the remote connection. So we can provide the URL. It means uh, we can our application can accept the remote connection. So if we go back and hit the U, the IP address, we're getting the hello world response. So anyway, this is not a good approach. Why? Because yes, we are having an IP address for the virtual machine, but if we restart the virtual machine, what will happen? We will definitely get a new IP address assigned to this virtual machine from the uh, SDN, the built-in SDN open chat. So once the virtual machine started a new IP address will be assigned so it means working with the machine IP address is not very helpful so now if we take this IP address definitely the old IP address there will not be any response and only if we use the new IP address assigned to the virtual machine and this is very well known, right? In line with the uh, container uh, network setup in OpenShift. So to overcome this challenge, we definitely need to create a surface. So for us to create the surface, we need to first introduce a label, right? In the virtual machine. So we can go to the template section and then adding a new label. So VM name call it .NET. So we added a new label to the VM. So we know that every virtual machine is running within a bot. So if you go to the details, yeah, let's just make sure. Yeah, so now we have the label created. If you go to the details and click on the bot, so the bots in, are inheriting or the bots inherit the labels from the virtual machine template but we don't see it here why because we simply need to restart the virtual machine so if we go to the virtual machine and restart it the underlying bot labels will be updated accordingly so if i click the details so I bet should be assigned soon but while this I bet is assigned let's click on the bot and go to the YAML and now we can see that let's yeah we can see the VM name dot net is already added to the bot template good so now we have the virtual machine create we have the IB address so let's create a new surface now so we will create cluster IB surface and this is the surface name and this is the port number be available through the surface and it's cluster IB and more important is the selector using the same label we used for the virtual machine so if we go to the uh, so this is the fully qualified domain name of the uh, surface and this is the port and if you go to the bots we can see that yes the virtual machine bot is already mapped to this surface using the uh, label matching 
So let's go to the virtual machine and make sure that the application is still running. Change to the demo folder and then we start our application. Listening to yeah, remote connections and let's start it on board 5000. Okay, start and then we can go back now to details, give the IP address and make sure that application is responding and this is the we need just to use the board number 5000 so application is responding now let's try to access the application using the service fully qualified domain name so curl fqdn and the port number application is responding so the next step, let's now uh, have the uh, setup on two different virtual machines to have a highly available setup of this application. So let's start another VM where the application in a sense will be running. So we'll just clone the existing virtual machine, give it a name, which is the same name clone. And we will start the application, the virtual machine, once it is created. So now the clone virtual machine is running. And we can see that it's running on worker one. So the original virtual machine, we need just to start it. But once the original virtual machine started on worker two, we got the IP address. We just wait for the agent to start. Okay, so now it is ready. Let's connect to the console and make sure that the application is running. Good. So let's start the application on the cloned virtual machine. Otherwise, it's not yet responding. Okay, fail to connect. It means we need to start the application there. So we go to the console, start the application. And allowing remote connection port 5000 and very good so the application now is running on both machines and if we take the surface and check the bots we can see that now there are two bots because every virtual machine having its own bot and both are having the right labels this is why the surface to bot mapping is happening so if we hit the surface name we're getting the hello world so now to make sure that the load balancing is happening let's go to the uh, every virtual machine and just make a small change in the dotnet application so let's just add The node name 
to the end of the uh, hello world message then we can distinguish between the response coming from first node and the response coming from the second node so this is just simple hello world and we add node one save the file start the application You can see now one response is coming from node one if we hit it again the second response is coming from the first node where we did not add the node name yet so let's quickly go and add it we stop the application edit the program c sharp and add the node two to the end of the hello world message. Save the file, start the application, and then we go back to our curl command. So one time we're getting the node one, the second request we're getting node to. and this shows how the uh, surface is distributing the load over the two virtual machines.